Kälte. Er sagte, unter sich sechs Liter. Sechs Liter Hoffnung. This time, Matsuda, Professor Matsuda talked about neutralization of carbon dioxide as solvent and substrate for biocatalysis. So please. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers and Amana Enzyme for inviting me to this first North America Japan Enzyme Technology Symposium. It's a tremendous honor to be here to speak and to share the, my study on and utilization of carbon dioxide as a substrate and um, as a solvent for biocatalysts. As all you know, atmospheric carbon dioxide is increasing and causing environmental problems. So it's urgent to think about how to use it. Uh, actually, pressurized carbon dioxide is very good green solvents. It's sustainable and it's practical because it's chemically inert. It's not flammable. It has low viscosity and high diffusibility. So you can imp improve the reaction rate possibly. And because it's non-polar, so it dissolves hydrophobic pharmaceutically important compounds. And the product can be easily recovered without purification step. You just have to decrease the pressure to the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, in the industrial process, they have been used since 1970s. For example, extraction process of flavor and caffeine from coffee and cholesterol from mayonnaise, and also for the dry cleaning process. When you think about carbon dioxide as a substrate, it's not good substrate, however. Also, it is attractive as a C1 building block. It's challenging to use it due to its low reactivity. However, pressurized carbon dioxide is better. It has high density of carbon dioxide, which makes the reactions using carbon dioxide as a substrate favorable and shift the equilibrium of the carboxylation, decarboxylation to other carboxylation but you need catalyst to do it. And uh, there are enzyme and also chemical catalysts um, have been developed, but I use enzyme because of the, these merits. It's sustainable, it's selective, and it's versatile. And I think these are all have been demonstrated from this morning, so I just skip it. But, um, as a solvent for biocatalysis, um, Besides aqueous solvent, there are organic solvents, ionic liquid, and also um, pressurized carbon dioxide can be a solvent for biocatalysis. Today, in my first topic of today, I use supercritical carbon dioxide for the lipase catalyzed reaction. And I also use the CO2 expanded liquid, which is a mixture of organic solvents and pressurized gas, CO2. I don't want to use conventional organic solvents due to the environmental concern. I use bio-based liquid. This 
is monophasic. In my second topic of today for carboxylation, I use water and pressurized carbon dioxide biphasic system. So I use carbon dioxide as both substrate and product. Uh, I mean solvents, sorry. So this is the outline, and I will start with lipase catalyzed transesterification. Lipase has been used widely due to these merits, and it catalyzed um, hydrolysis, and it catalyzed transesterification in organic solvents. So the replacement of conventional organic solvents to green alternatives such as carbon dioxide is important. This shows you the phase diagram and image of carbon dioxide. This green square is carbon dioxide. Um, there are solid phase, liquid and gas, and there are one more phase, supercritical fluid phase, above its critical point of 31 degree and 73 atmosphere. If you mix carbon dioxide with ordinary liquid, then you can get the CO2 expanded liquid. This is, shows you liquid and gas as carbon dioxide, and now it's getting to be a supercritical state when you see only monophasic system. Supercritical carbon dioxide and uh, CO2 expanded liquid both have these gas-like high diffusivity and liquid-like high solubilizing power. Biocatalysis in pressurized gas has been reported for the first time in 1985, and high energy selectivity of a lipase catalyzed reaction around the critical points, and acceleration of a reaction by using lipid-coated beta d galactosylase in supercritical carbon dioxide have been reported. But when I began this kind of research topic in 2000, there were no practical organic synthesis using supercritical carbon dioxide. So I established a flow reaction using lipase for chiral synthesis using supercritical carbon dioxide. I briefly introduced this now. Um, so in this system, um, substrate, racemic substrate, and carbon dioxide, supercritical carbon dioxide, is sent to a column reactor packed with lipase. And then product will coming out here. Before the back pressure regulator, the carbon dioxide is in supercritical state so that it dissolves substrate and product. But after this, it gets to be a gas. So it's escape, and the product can be easily recovered. I did a three-day operation of this system, and the conversion stayed at 50%, and the e value were 12,000. Using 1.73 gram of immobilized enzyme, novozyme, 221 gram of racemic substrate was converted to the um, product of 99% EE and the remaining substrate of 99% EE. And space-time yield was improved by 400 times compared to the BAT system. The proton enamel spectrum of the product without any purification is uh, contain no byproduct at all. So without using any organic solvent at all, racemic substrate was converted to chiral product. So after successful success in this establishing this um, process, I tried to decrease the pressure. So I moved to the liquid carbon dioxide, and then now I'm working with using CO2 expanded liquid. It's a mixture of carbon dioxide and liquid. So pressure and temperature can be any pressure or temperature. So the pressure was 
degrees. Um, when you pressurize with carbon dioxide the, on the liquid, um, it expands. It expands like this. And the transport property, like diffusibility, are improved by dissolved carbon dioxide of like gas-like characteristics. When I compare organic solvents and carbon dioxide expanded liquid and liquid or supercritical carbon dioxide in terms of viscosity, diffusibility, solubility of polar compound, and amount of CO2 waste solvent generation and working pressure. This carbon dioxide expanded liquid is just in the middle of these two and has a merit of both. Um, when you work with carbon dioxide expanded liquid, you need the liquid components. And as a liquid component, I use bio-based liquid. One of them is methyl THF. This is one of the most um, attractive bio-based liquid. However, um, when this reaction is reported, the, the conversion is very low. So I decided to expand with carbon dioxide. At first, I put 1.0 milliliter of carbon dioxide, and then if I pressurize it with carbon dioxide to 5.8 megapascal, it's expanded to 8 milliliter. Other bio-based liquid, as well as conventional um, liquid like hexane or vanilla acid, also expand like this. So CO2 fraction can be controlled by the pressure. And the solvent properties are tunable so that enzymatic reaction can be controlled. At first, I tried this reaction, transesthetic lification of one adenantyl ethanol by um, Calvi lipase. This is a difficult substrate because it's bulky. So when I do this reaction in, uh, in bio-based liquid without CO2, then conversion was low. But when I expanded these by carbon dioxide, um, green is bio-based liquid and the blue is um, conventional solvent. And then conversion dramatically increased. It's also increased in the case of hexane. So hydrophobicity, well, hexane is hydrophobic at, without expansion, but it is expanded. So n not only other factor other than hydrophobicity affect this improvement. Um, I examined this reaction in detail. I changed the temperature and pressure. More fraction corresponding to the pressure. And the rate increased. But it is rate is affected by the temperature. So um, it's normalized based on the um, value at the zero fraction. Then it's get on to the same line. Um, because I also reprotted this data to using polarity on the x-axis, and then I normalized it, then it's correlation between polarity and uh, um, normalized activity reaction rate is also uh, seen. So the um, enzymatic activity are controlled by solvent property which is controlled by temperature and pressure for the first time. I also um, check other substrates using other various bulky substrates. These are all difficult substrates for the lipase. Um, when I compare methyl THF and CO2 expanded methyl THF, the difference is obvious. I expanded this system them to also substitute one phenylethanol because these are important pharmaceutical 
uh, important component. And the result was that um, nitro solvents afforded only low conversion, whereas CO2 expanded liquid reaction gave higher yield. This shows user detail. It was uh, seen in using method DHF and also in hexen. When I tried tetanol derivative, same thing happened. Um, I mean, this, the, I use this compound because it is important pharmaceutically. I use more hindered one tetrarol derivative and less hindered two tetrarol der derivative. Um, for both substrates, it is um, improved by expanding with CO2. When I compare the rates, then um, in the case of one tetrarol, it was 2.9 time, times improvement. This is more hindered. And uh, for the case of two tetrarol, it was only 1.3 times <laughs> improvement. Um, I also tested other one tetrarol derivative, and the I changed the substituent. Then, when I compare between with and without carbon dioxide, it was improved up to 40 times. And when I compare between substrates, in the case where with, uh, without using carbon dioxide. It was oh, the difference between the substrate was 13 times. But when I use carbon dioxide, the difference get to be only 3.8 times. So I th think about why the improvement was obtained. Um, there are temporal factors we have to think about. First, hydrophobicity. For the case of methyl THF, I think hydrophobicity affected the reaction rate. But for the case of hexane, it is, hexane is hydrophobic, so it did not um, account for this. Flexibility of the enzyme is probably most important factor to explain this. Um, Calvi structure um, in the conventional solvents has they're selective pocket. But in the liquid carbon dioxide, it was calculated it has more flexibility. So I think same thing may happen to the CO2 expanded liquid. Transport property of the solvent is maybe affecting a little bit because the degree of acceleration by CO2 depended on substrate. If transport property is, is the main factor, then all substrate will be improved. Um, pressure is maybe no, because I did the um, reaction using pressurized metal DHF and pressurized hexane at six megapascal without carbon dioxide did not affect the activity. So flexibility of enzyme is probably the most important factor. So I so far explained the successful for reaction using supercritical carbon dioxide as a solvent. And I explained about rate acceleration of the reaction by of bulky substrates using ca carbon dioxide expanded bio-based liquid. Next, I would talk about carbon dioxide as a substrate for carboxylation, I will introduce two reactions, decarboxylase catalyzed carboxylation and isocytrate dehydrogenase catalyzed reductive carboxylation. I will begin with the first example. Um, in nature, carbon dioxide is used by photosynthesis by enzyme, and everything necessary is produced we should do it also using enzyme to make everything I need, we need. Um, 
from 1970s. Lipid catalyzed reaction was found to be reversible so that it's due hydrolysis in the presence of water, but it's due esterification without um, water. Our goal is to use decarboxylase for the reverse reaction of the carboxylation in the presence of carbon dioxide. Professor Nagasawa and Yoshida in Gifu University found um, decarboxylase from bacillus megatherium, which catalyzes the carboxylation of pyrrole efficiently. And I wonder if equilibrium is favorable for carboxylation and the high concentration of carbon dioxide. With collaboration of their group, I tried this um, reaction under supercritical carbon dioxide and keeping um, pressure to the ambient. Then the yield difference was obvious. When I checked the pressure dependency, it, the yield was highest just before the critical pressure, and, but it decreased maybe because of the carbon dioxide dissolved in the water layer, um, decreased the pH, or the activation by the carbon dioxide happening. So in this first example, high concentration of carbon dioxide was effective for the carbon dioxide, but um, at the same time, we also need better enzymes. Then I move to the second example. Um, group of enzymes, including isocytolate dehydrogenase and malate dehydrogenase, catalyzes the carboxylation of, and uh, um, reduction. I use thermoplasma acetophenum isocytolate dehydrogenase and glucose dehydrogenase to do um, carboxylation reaction using gaseous carbon dioxide. In the reference, it is reported that organic solvent tolerance of the enzyme is related to the thermostability. So thermostable enzyme is also tolerant to organic solvents. I wonder if thermostable enzyme is also uh, has high stability toward high pressure carbon dioxide. So I use the thermoplasma acetophenum enzyme. At first, I tried using commercially available enzyme, and when I checked the stability, CO2 stability, as well as, therm as thermal stability, it decreased. It was very weak. And then I start using uh, thermoplasma astrophilum. Because the gene gen genomic uh, DNA is commercially available, overexpression of the enzyme, these three enzymes were successfully done by using E. coli. And then I examine the thermal stability and the carbon dioxide stability of these two enzymes. Then the, uh, we found out that it was very stable in CO, under high pressure, 10 megapascal of CO2. And then I did the reaction using at first the IDH. But the reaction unfortunately didn't proceed smoothly and only 4% of the product was obtained. Then I added glucose and glucose dehydrogenase for the recycling of the coenzyme. Then yield improved dramatically to 67% from 4%. After that, I uh, tr we tried to further improve the um, versatility of these two enzymes. 
to make it more stable and useful, I immobilize these two enzymes by forming enzyme in organic hybrid nanocrystal. This immobilization method is reported by uh, in 2012, and uh, I use this method because it is a very simple method. You just have to mix the enzyme solution in phosphate buffered saline and uh, metal ion solution. In this case, we use um, manganese. Well, I tra we tried several, and uh, we found out manganese was the best. Uh, after mixing these two solutions, you just have to um, incubate, then you can get precipitated enzyme, so that you can get, uh, you, you, you just have to do centrifugation to get this immobilized enzyme. When I compare the activity, remaining activity of the enzyme, then activity of TIDH shown in blue improved to around 200%. However, TADDH activity shown in orange decreased. But this is slightly get better using higher ratio of TADDH. Then I did the carboxylation reaction using a co-immobilized enzyme with an optimized ratio. Then carboxylation yield was obtained here was better than free enzyme or separately immobilized enzyme. In this case, I use only one megapascal of carbon dioxide. So to conclude my, conclu um, my presentation, I utilize carbon dioxide for biocatalysis. First topic, investigated the solvent engineering of lipase catalyzed reaction. Flow reaction is successful, and the CO2 expanded by is also useful to expand the substrate. Secondary, I um, did the carboxylation reaction. And for this reaction, carbon dioxide pressure was necessary to shift the reaction equilibrium toward the carboxylation. But for this reaction of reductive carboxylation, NADPH recycling was necessary. So at last, I'd like to acknowledge the individual who did this work. Um, I appreciate my students and staff in our laboratory since 2004 and collaborate for dedication and hard work. And I also appreciate my supervisor in graduate school and Professor Tadao Haradar for, um, he was my boss where I was an assistant professor for guidance and support. And also I appreciate the um, funding I got before. And thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to, uh, to answer your questions. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Uh, I'm intrigued when you tested your hypothesis about the supercritical CO2 influencing the, the flexibility of, of your enzyme. Is there a way, and, and maybe this is a naive question, but please bear with me, is there a way of, of changing the, the concentration? Basically, can you change the, the, the liquid dynamics or the, the fluid dynamics of the solvent by, by changing the ratio of the supercritical CO2 with a co-solvent in order to see whether there's a concentration dependency that you can demonstrate as far as enzyme flexibility or the, the consequences of enzyme flexibility is concerned? Well, um, conversion increased according to the CO2 pressure, but for the um, flexibility of flexibility of enzyme is a very is a 
actually impossible to actually measure because it's high pressure. And um, I only can do it in the simulation. And I haven't done the simulation using different, um, different concentration of carbon dioxide yet. I need to do it, but, um, well, when uh, it's obvious that hexane and carbon dioxide is different. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I will do it. Um, yeah. Well, actually, I, <laughs> my I have to ask my collaborator for, to do it. I mean, by changing the concentration of CO2 to see the fluctuation, I mean, um, the how um, root mean square, uh, well, uh, how much the Jeez. amino acid, each amino acid, well, some of the amino acid fluctuate, uh, move very much after changing from hexane to liquid carbon dioxide. So I hope I can see the um, increase gradually when I change the carbon dioxide concentration. Yeah, thank you very much for your good suggestion. So flexibility enhances the activity, but sometimes uh, decreases the selectivity. So if you apply the uh, chiral synthesis or something, it needs the reaction needs specificity. Is it some negative effect or not? Well, in this case, we didn't have any negative um, consequence. Um, in terms of E value, it um, stays high. But in the another example, using supercritical carbon dioxide, um, I'm sorry, it's only in Japanese. I'm very sorry, it's Japanese. But um, when I use this substrate with low um, enantial selectivity, this is pressure, and this is enantial selectivity. Um, when I did the reaction in this three temperature, um, according to the pressure, it's decreased. So, when, uh, but, but um, around here, it has high density, and here it has low density, so that um, when the density is lower, so which means the flexibility is higher, um, energy selectivity is higher. So that it's opposite of what we expect. But uh, energy selectivity changes sometimes in this case. Oh, very interesting. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so I would like to close your talk. Thank, thank you. you again.